and good morning. Thank you for coming at this very early hour. My name is Martin Festerholt, and I work as a gameplay designer at Playdead. And this talk will be like a deep dive into the basic jump of a platformer. And uh, I wrote a thesis about this that I recently finished, so much of this is the result of that. And the hope is that this will, will help game developers when designing a jump. So this is a, a rough overview of what we will be going through. First, we'll go through the, the method I used for gathering information and for studying jumps. Uh, secondly, I'll, I'll give you a lot of details about three specific jumps. And lastly, I'll talk about what that then means for designing the games. So why do they have the jump they have, and why is that ideal for a given game? So first off, method. So here we have a game like Super Mario Bros. 3 for the Nintendo. So this game has been researched so much. Uh, everybody and their mother has explored this game. And you can just go on the internet and you can find every single detail you'll want down to the pixel and memory allocation of everything. So there's not a lot there in terms of challenge with getting the information. So this one you can just look up and that's the case for some of these old games. But what happens if you have other games, more recent games, that haven't been picked apart in the same way? So we could have a game like Super Meat Boy or Limbo. And these three games are going to be the, the primary case studies throughout this talk. It's going to be yeah, Super Mario, Super Meat Boy, and Limbo. So what, how do I get to explore these games? I want to I know very detailed how, how they jump. And it's just not quite enough just to open the game and jump around, because that gives me some intuitive sense of how, how the character jumps. But I want a lot more precision than that, and I want to be able to really take the jump apart and see how they differ. Are the three jumps maybe just like, there's nothing to the jump, there's just one impulse, and he jumps, and then there's gravity, and that's it? If that's the case, then I want to know the specific parameters of that, but maybe there's more to, to these uh, jumps than, than meets the eye. So this is, this is my approach. I don't expect you to quite be able to read this, but this is a tool I made. Uh, and what it does is it simulates input. So it jacks into a game like Super Meat Boy or like Limbo, and then it pretends to be an Xbox controller. And then, as you see there in the middle, I can kind of make a sequence of jumps. So I can say, run to the left for like half a second, then jump for exactly 0.2 second, then change the direction of the stick, and so forth. So I can give very, very precise input down to like frame per precise input. So this gives me kind of the input fidelity that I, I didn't have when I was just jumping around myself. So this is what it looks like when, when it's playing. So the only thing uh, that really happens is that Meat Boy, he does whatever action I, I told him to do. And the orange overlay is then the state of the controller that gets rendered on top of the game. Uh, and a timer as well. So that's super convenient because the next stage is that I want to record this. So I record the whole screen, including the overlay, and that gives me all the information that I need. Again, a tool that's really hard to see what's happening, but basically this is an application that, you, that I load the video into, and then I click the position of the character at every frame, and then I export that as uh, data. So now I've made the transition from very precise input, recording it all, and then tracking the movement. So now I have movement over time, and I have all the information that I need. And then I did a lot of different experiments with running and with jumping and letting go of the jump and changing direction until I could basically break down all I wanted to know about his basic jump. So here, the, the blue curve is the raw data that I get into Excel. I can now make a curve of what, in this case, for example, the running jump in Limbo looks like. And when I have that, I can start to make a model on how I think they implemented that jump. So here, that's the red curve. And here I'm satisfied, I think I'm close enough to, to having an idea of how they did that jump. And in some cases, I would have to do several tests and, and try different things out and adjust until I had something I felt was close enough. So having, having done that, I now have broken down the different pieces of the jump, and I can start to explore them. So one of the things I did to kind of confirm uh, all the things that I was digging up was make this uh, Unity thing where you can, where you can play around. So now I can do a, like a rough replication of each of the games inside this prototyping tool. So here we have Meat Boy. And not a lot, uh, 
not a lot is going on. It's basically just just the jump and not anything of the fancy things or the level design or the wall jumps. It's just the basic jump that I'm interested in. And I have the same with Mario. And this is ideal both because I can now uh, start experimenting with it in Unity and get it visualized much better. Uh, but I can also kind of confirm what, uh, what I've found, that it's actually close to, to Mario. So I, like, I have a platform like this, I can test, okay, he, he it feels, the jump feels the same as, as when I do it in Mario. And here we have Limbo. There's really missing something here, but <laughs> no graphics, just the bugs. Okay, so that's all well and good. Now I have these replication, and now I can really start to break down each part of the jump, and then I can try and see what, what's actually hiding in there. So before we get to the, the actual jump and getting off the ground, it's worth looking just at moving. So just moving left and right. So that's what we have here. And the little arrow above his head shows my input. So here we have a character moving. He has an acceleration. Let go, he has a deceleration. So if I change direction, you'll see that he has this very uh, slidey turn. And that's not ideal. So what most platformer games do is that they have this turn acceleration. So the blue guy here you see is actually Mario. So Mario, he accelerates and he decelerates. But if you change direction, he has a different move. So instead of just applying his regular acceleration when he turns, he actually applies a special extra acceleration, which is equal to both his acceleration, his deceleration, and a bit more. So all that together makes that iconic Mario slide. And it's very common for platformers to have some sort of additional acceleration for turning, because otherwise it's just too slippery. Uh, he also has this deceleration, so I can let go and I can see him settle slowly. So here we have uh, Meat Boy. So he has very different pace already. He's so fast compared to Mario. He also has this turn acceleration. For him, it's just the double of his acceleration. But uh, he has a very different notion when I let go. So Mario had this slow deceleration. Meat Boy, on the other hand, goes from one frame to the next and stops instantaneously. And lastly, here we have Limbo. So for Meat Boy, interestingly, even though you play it with a controller, the, the input is entirely digital. So it's either he's running or he's not running. Uh, it feels a lot when you play it, I think at least, that it feels like you have some sort of analog control of his movement speed, but that's not the case. It's just an either-or. In Limbo, however, you do have uh, analog input. So this is the, the graph of how input maps to movement speed. So we can see how input slowly uh, goes up. The movement speed likewise increases as we would expect. There's like a flat dead zone, and then the, the speed goes up uh, exponentially, which, which is ideal because then you have a finer fidelity in the lower end of the spectrum. So when you're not pushing the stick that far, you have like a medium uh, range uh, run, side or run speed, and then towards the top, you get a really fast run speed, and then we have a flat plateau at the top just to make sure that it's not hard to maintain that maximum run speed if that's what you want. Yeah, a bit of a side note here is some games have this edge-aware uh, deceleration or, or acceleration, but deceleration in this case, so uh, I can't really show that, but basically it means that this slide that we saw with Mario, which takes like sometimes up to half a second, can be, be quite a long time after the player has let go of the input and the character is still moving. So imagine that you're running towards the spikes and you want to avoid the spikes, so you let go of the input and the character just slides directly into the spikes and you feel that it wasn't your fault because you had actually released the input. So some games detect that and then increases deceleration when going towards spikes or when going over edges. So sometimes you'll, you'll see that. So you can, uh, if you're in a, a platforming game and you, uh, you run, oh, and you run towards an edge and you let go and you can feel that there is a different deceleration, then they've done some sort of trick like this. 
We'll get to the jump soon. So next we'll talk about falling. So here we have Meat Boy falling. And in Meat Boy there's just uh, a gravity that pulls him towards the Earth, and that's the end of it. And if we put here we have Mario next to him. And here you can see perhaps that there's something funky going on. So the blue, the blue square appears to be ahead, and then the red catches up. So how, how can that happen? So what's actually happening is that the gravity in Mario is, is very high, much higher than Meat Boy, so that's why he starts up out ahead. But Mario has this terminal velocity, which is his maximum fall speed. And when he reaches that, he just doesn't accelerate anymore, and that's why Meat Boy can catch up. This is Mario without that uh, limit. And here we have Limbo. So this is perhaps a very clear case of how differently paced these games are. Even the gravity in Limbo is just so much slower than the other games. So here is an example of what this uh, terminal velocity will do to Mario. So this is Mario without the terminal velocity. He's kind of accelerated very rapidly towards the ground. Here's Mario with the terminal velocity. So here you can see he does a slightly more floaty landing. You can try and hide these. So if you play Mario again and think about this, you, you can definitely feel this float uh, and that it, he's just not continuously accelerating. It's also interesting that it happens very, very quickly. So in Mario it actually happens uh, around like 0 0.23 seconds. So like very fast into his jump, he'll reach his maximum fall speed. So now we got the, the basic ground movement, now I'll, uh, we'll get to the jump. So here we have Meat Boy. So for Meat Boy, it is just a case of there is one impulse when he takes off, a takeoff velocity that sends him into the air. Then we have the gravity that slowly gets him back down. And that's the end of the story for his basic jump. So this was, this was maybe the, the jump, uh, jump I would imagine was in these games. So if we move on here, we have Mario. So already we can see that the shape of the curve, that there's something very different happen, happening here, because otherwise it would have the same shape as Meat Boy and just be scaled differently. So there's something going on here with Mario. The first thing to note is he has more than one takeoff velocity. So Meat Boy has one takeoff velocity, which ca covers everything. So no matter how fast he's running, or if he's uh, at different terrains or whatever, he'll have the same jump height, the same takeoff velocity. That's not the case for Mario. Mario has multiples. And they are determined by how fast he's running. So the faster you go, the higher you jump. But they're not, they're not a, um, a linear relationship between the two. There's actually steps. So there's these discrete intervals. So here we see two of them. The dark blue one is the one if you're standing still or moving at a very slow pace. If you're going slightly faster, then you get the light blue one. And he actually has two more. He has the orange one for when he's, he's running or sprinting, and then he has the last one when he's going at the, the maximum speed. So even though there is these steps, I imagine that the player will not feel this. I imagine it will just feel as if there's a relationship between run speed and, and jump height. Uh, but there are actually these steps in between, and as we shall see later, it becomes uh, an advantage to have these steps when doing the level design, because you can, you can do some tricks with that. So let's, let's take a bit of a look again. There's something more going on with this curve than just different, different takeoff velocities, because again, if it was just different takeoff velocities, it would have the same curve shape as, as Meat Boy, and it doesn't. So it's, it's way more pointy, so what's going on there? So what is happening is that there's an additional force after he takes off. So we have this takeoff velocity that sends him into the air when you hit the jump key, but on top of that he has this additive force which, which just pushes him upwards continuously. And it, it works a bit like a jetpack that just propels him upwards, uh, and, and this gives him the, the peak of the jump, or the pointy jump, that he has this force going. At some point, it hits like a threshold towards the top of the curve here, where he, uh, he no longer gets the additive force. And then gravity take over, and he has this very high gravity, which turns things around very quickly and sends him back down. And here's the terminal velocity from before. So 
already after reaching that orange area, he doesn't fall any further, and that's where we get that floating fall. So now this all together starts to explain why he has this pointy curve, and, and why this pointy curve makes sense in Mario we'll get to later. It's also worth noting that it's slightly asymmetrical, but it's a bit hard to see here, but it's actually leaning slightly to the right. Next we have Limbo. So Limbo is uh, different than the other two in several ways with his takeoff velocity. So it's hard to see on this curve, but he actually has a horizontal takeoff velocity. The other two games only got an upwards velocity, so they were sent into the air, but, but the boy in Limbo is actually sent forwards, and he's actually sent forwards more than he's sent upwards. So if we go to this one, it's slightly easier to see. So the example on the right, uh, he doesn't have that much run speed, but you can still see that his jump curve is pushed a lot to the right because he has this horizontal acceleration. So all of a sudden, there's a direction to the jump, and this, this changes a lot how the jump feels. And it's easiest to see us here uh, at low speeds. Again, like his, his run speed was analog. That's also the case for his takeoff velocity. So here's just three examples of him going at different speeds, obtaining different heights. So the, the faster he's running, the higher up he gets. Uh, curiously, the horizontal takeoff velocity is always the same. So it's only the up part that's adjusted. He always goes forward by the same amount. And his, his is not uh, intervals or steps. For, for Limbo, it is just a linear relationship. So it, however much you're pushing the stick will gradually lead to, to higher jumps. On top of this, there's also an extra rule, which is there's a distance requirement. So if you have been running uh, for a shorter distance than, than this cutoff, then you get a penalty to your jump. And that's just a fixed penalty. They decrease a bit from the takeoff velocity, and then he gets a smaller jump. If, however, you're after this take, uh, like this cutoff, then you get the full-size jump. So there's this notion of a short jump. And this is used, for example, if you just hold jump and just continue to go, then you'll land, and then you won't traverse enough distance to get the long, long jump, and then you'll be hindered in your next jump. So if you're trying to do some sort of bunny jumping thing. For Mario, we also have this increased, increased takeoff velocity. So that makes some sort of anticipation when running towards an edge. So you're sprinting towards the edge, trying to get enough speed so that you can make the jump across the gap and, and don't die. And there, there's some tension there. Uh, with reaching that, that speed, right? And that's, that's made in limbo both with the scaling of the speed, but also with this distance thing. So if you just stand next to the edge of a, of a pit and you jump across, you'll get this penalty and you'll clearly not make it across the jump. However, if you just go like a few steps back, then you have a little bit of this anticipation and then you get rewarded for it and you get the full jump for, for doing this run up. And we have Meat Boy in the opposite direction, which doesn't have this this anticipation because he always jumps the same. So in most cases, you can just jump whenever you want and there's a different mechanic going on there. Okay, next is jump release. So jump release, or a different way could be to explain it like a short jump or a, a controlled jump. So it's basically releasing the jump input be before you reach the peak of the height, uh, peak of the jump. And uh, this, in most games, make a shorter jump. There's also some games where it doesn't matter. You can release the jump key and uh, nothing happens. But in most games, it will, it will make a shorter jump. So here we have um, Meat Boy again. So it's different for different games how they implement the short jump. So this is one shape of a short jump. The vertical line shows when the jump input is released. And what's happening in Meat Boy is that he just entirely removes um, vertical velocity. So it's the same as if he hit the ceiling. So he just instantly breaks. And in some ways, that mirrors the instant break we saw when he was running. So he just instantly stops. And this is, uh, in this case, not too noticeable because it's towards the peak of the jump, so he has decreased a bit. But here we have the, the smallest jump. And here it's a really a rapid change when he just all of a sudden hits this invisible wall. But it does make for very precise uh, control of the character. This is the smallest jump he can make. And uh, if you just tap the jump key, it actually kind of virtually holds down the jump key for 0.1 seconds. 
resulting in this tiny jump. So to avoid him just doing like a weird twitch, if you just like briefly tap the key, they've made this uh, minimum jump size. So next we have Mario. So again, we see the pointy jump curve. He does it very differently than, than Meat Boy. So here again, we have this jetpack force from before, the additive jump force. So what happens in Mario when you release the jump key is that he, uh, he just no longer applies this jetpack force. So that's another way that this jetpack force is used, apart from making a very different jump curve. So here we can see at the horizontal line, he releases input, and then gravity like makes a curve at the top that's similar to what you would also see if you had uh, held down jump. So it's a, this kind of consistent shape where Meat Boy had this very rapid change in, in speed. In Mario, however, it does also give you like a bit less control because the character has to kind of slow down in his jump before actually getting down, whereas Meat Boy will go down immediately. In Mario, there's no minimum jump because if you just tap for one frame, then you'll just have the the no, no jetpack force, the takeoff velocity, and then gravity curves him down. So that makes for a natural kind of minimum jump, and they didn't have to implement anything there. So here we have Limbo. Limbo, again, is a, is a, is a bit different. So what happens is Limbo didn't have uh, this additive jetpack force, so there's nothing there that can be turned off in, in the same way as Mario did it. So in Limbo, what happens is that there's an extra friction applied downwards. So if you let go of the jump key, then, uh, then you're pushed downwards. Additionally, the other, the other games didn't, didn't have anything if you release the, the stick input or the horizontal input. In Limbo, however, if you let go, then you get a horizontal friction. So letting go of the jump gives you a vertical friction. Letting go of the stick gives you a horizontal friction. And combined, this means that to, to make the maximum jump uh, which you probably want because you're trying to get over some spikes or something horrible, you actually have to hold down both the, the stick input and the jump input. And while that sounds trivial, it's not always a guarantee that people do that, and it, it's actually been making some trouble. So this leads into air control. So how do the characters move in the air? Uh, when I started this project, I suspected there was all sorts of shenanigans going on in the air that that Meat Boy would like uh, change the, uh, the air acceleration like gradually to get like, just the right amount of control. And it doesn't, uh, doesn't turn out to be that complicated. So here we have uh, Meat Boy running along. So the first thing I'm going to try is letting go of the, of the horizontal input in the air. So what happens when I let go and you see the error disappear is nothing at all. So uh, in Meat Boy, letting go when you're already in the middle of a jump will have no effect on, on where he's jumping. However, if you do change your direction, he starts accelerating in that direction. So two different cases there. So the, the acceleration in the air where I thought there was a lot of shenanigans, turned out to just be the same as on the ground. In fact, it was exactly the same. So he just accelerates as if he's on the ground. Of course, it's only horizontal. Nothing happens to his, his vertical movement. And the same turn acceleration, if you change direction in the air, is also the same as on the ground. Uh, and this gives, it, it gives the character a very consistent feel because the movement will feel the same in the air as, as it did on the ground. If we move on, here we have Mario. So again, I'm going to try and let go of the horizontal input. Not much is happening. Again, nothing happens if you release the horizontal. There's no extra thing going on. If I change direction, again, I have this air control. And for Mario, it also turned out he actually has the same acceleration and turn acceleration in the air as he did on the ground. Next, we have Limbo. So we'll do a bit of a zoom here. So again, I'm going to try and let go of the horizontal input. I have to do that a bit later. So here is a, a huge difference. So this is a full jump. So here we really see that horizontal friction kicking in and, and breaking the character quite a lot. 
So if I try and, and change the direction entirely, remember we saw that acceleration and these smooth air curves with the other characters before. Try it again. So in Limbo, if you give opposite direction, it's just the same as releasing. You just get the friction. So there's no, there's no way to revert. You can't go back on the jump. You can't say, oh, I didn't want to jump. Let's curve that back. Once you've committed, you have to go, or you can at best go slower and decelerate yourself. Here we have a bit of a detail. The edge jump. So this is the notion of jumping after you actually left the platform. So this is the case in Limbo. So it's a small buffer time. In, in Limbo, it's implemented as a, as a timer. So you have like 0 0.08 seconds after you left the platform and where you can still jump. So it just counts as if you're standing on the platform still. And this is an advantage if you, if you want to be a bit more forgiving. So, so if the player tries to like time the jump right at the edge of the platform, and he's like one pixel off, and then you let him fall, that can feel very punishing. So there's there, because of this, there's this small buffer where you're still allowed to jump. This is not the case in Mario and Meat Boy. They're just harsh. They just let you fall to your doom. Okay, so that, that's been uh, all, the, all the details I had time for. Uh, and I'll try and reflect a bit on what this means. Because, of course, it's all well and good that we can break them apart, and we can see how, how all these different uh, implementation details are, and that might give us some, some information, but there's, there's a bit more reflecting to, to be done. So here we have Meat Boy, just to summarize. So we have this instant break if he lets go. If we change direction, we have the turn. We have a, a very reliable uh, takeoff velocity because it, do it doesn't matter uh, with the run speed. It's independent of the run speed. We have a very smooth, symmetrical curve, which makes these like long jumps that you do in Meat Boy uh, ideal. So you can you can do them very reliable because the curve is is symmetrical. So you know where you're going, and you have this reliable takeoff velocity. You have the reliable brake, so that you know when you let go, you instantly do what you want. On the maybe on the negative side, this makes him feel a bit sharp. So compared to Mario, Meat Boy can feel uh, as sharp, yeah. Where, where Mario can feel more weighty, as we shall see in a second. So what does this do for, for Meat Boy? So I would argue that it makes him perfect for avoiding things. So in, in Meat Boy, that's what you do most of the time, is that there's some sort of, of horror that's about to end your life, and you have to avoid it very quickly. So this case, for example, I'm running down like a hallway, and I have to avoid these saws while there's glass on the ceiling and the world is horrible. But because I have this instantaneous reaction to my input, it's actually be feasible for me to, to do this kind of movement. So he seems to just naturally avoid the saws, if I play properly. Because he has this fast speed, reliable jump, instant reaction, that makes him ideal for, for avoiding. So I think if you're making a game and you, you want the characters to be better at avoiding, it will be an advantage to tweak it slightly towards Meat Boy's control. If we try and do the same with Mario, now we have the first thing that would go wrong is that if I let go at the same time, he'll actually continue upwards because of that force and the gravity, so I'll end up in the spike. And also because he has this pointy curve, I won't, I won't go across in the same way as, as Meat Boy does. So let's look a bit at, at Mario. So here we have Mario. With Mario, we have this, remember, the slow deceleration. We have the same thing when jumping, if I let go. He always has this rounded off jump. So altogether, that makes Mario feel more physical, right? So he has these deceleration. It, it feels like he has weight. Uh, Meat Boy, in a way, is weightless because he just reacts instantly. Whereas Mario has this, uh, this notion of weight going on all, all the way through. And I would argue that, that his pointy jump curve and his floaty downward speed makes him ideal for stomping, which is luckily because uh, you do that all the time in, in Mario. So it seems because you have that extra control when going down and you have this pointy shape that you have a lot more leeway that will lead you to stomping on the thing. So where Meat Boy, he seemed to go around it and across it, Mario seems to land on it and then that's good for Mario. Uh, so here we have the, um, the platform, 
And if I go back maybe. So remember I was talking about these steps, the different jump intervals, and it was not a linear relationship. Here's a, a case where it makes sense. So if we just consider the two smallest one, I have one height, or one jump height if I if I, I'm not moving. So imagine I'm here. This is a representation of the very first thing you see in Super Mario Bros. 3 is this setup. If I'm not moving at all, this is the jump height I get, and it's just enough to hit the platform, right? Exactly enough. And I know that I can, I can do that as a level designer because I have the height specific. I know that this is the height they'll get. If, on the other hand, the character is running, then he gets it subtle, but he gets about half a height, half his own height, extra jump height, which is just a little bit of a buffer to make him get land on the platform. Because if he didn't have that, if he just had the minimum one, you would have to do like a perfect running jump, and it would be really hard to time it. So there it makes sense to just give it a slightly increased one. And Mario is tile-based, so you can just replicate these heights, and you can tweak your jumps just to fit with the right heights that you want. And you, likewise, the same thing is the case for the higher jump. So you have the sprinting jump that you can then send that to. You can have another tile that's one tile up, and that represents the sprinting jump or something like that. Another thing that's interesting in the Mario uh, level design is, so we have this deceleration where he slowly grinds to a halt. And, um, and they've kind of taken care of that or um, worked with that if you look at the level design. So if you imagine that this platform was half the size, what would happen when you jump towards it and let go is you would slide down of that question block every single time. And this can be really harsh. So what, what you'll see in Mario is that they have a lot of two wide platforms. So two question marks next to each other. Similarly, uh, the pipes have the same size. And, and this length, if I jump towards it and I let go, is just perfect for catching me after doing that slide. So of course, later in Mario, things get more complicated. The player is expected to do insane things with air control and do all sorts of maneuvering. But especially early on in the games, uh, it's nice to have this kind of forgiveness where you don't let them fall down every time, but let them have this gradual uh, slowdown. If we try with, with uh, Meat Boy briefly here, of course, everything is also scaled differently, but it's, it's really hard actually to land on him. You, you already, just to land on the first Goomba in Mario, you would have to do some sort of air maneuvering if you had the jump from Meat Boy. And he's also going so fast that even with the instant break, you can easily overshoot the platforms. So here we have Limbo. So to recap Limbo, we have a completely different pace than the other one, and that, that's why I didn't put it in the example, because it just doesn't make sense because he's so slow. So in, Meat Boy, the, or in, in Limbo, this slow pace makes sense because it fits the atmosphere and the mood and the puzzles of the game. So we no longer have to like do these crazy runs where we have to avoid uh, five different types of, of uh, danger at the same time. We can just walk at a, at a slow pace through the world. Then he had this, uh, this very limiting jump. So his jump is actually close to being realistic in terms of, of, of a real life. So the gravity is very close to real life. It's like nine meters per second maybe in, in if you convert it. So that's quite close to real life, which is like 9.82 or something like that. And his height, he jumps about half his height or 0 0.6 of his height, which is just about what some a human could do if they were good at jumping. And then he has this directional jump, which is also more natural uh, for real, real human beings than the other games. So here you can really see how good he is at jumping across more than up. So he has this very limited height, but he has a lot of reach because he has this acceleration across. And he actually goes a little bit faster in the air as well. He accelerates a little bit doing his jump and then decelerates just before landing. So this makes him ideal for going across. But it's very hard for him to go up. Oh, we made that jump. Oh, that's hard. So in Limbo, you'll see this represented with a lot of spikes you jump across, a lot of pits. But quite rarely do you ever jump upwards to avoid something. There's a few cases, but mostly jump across. Another thing to be said about this a uh, very limiting jump height is that it, it makes some jumps very hard. So this jump is actually impossible. 
even though it looks like I should totally be able to get up there. So what Limbo does to, to kind of remedy is this, is that it has a lot of uh, handling edges. So what would happen in the game, not in my prototype, is he would just grab the edge and lift himself up. So they, and this is the case for, for, um, throughout the game. So if you're jumping towards a platform, he'll reach out and he'll grab the ledge and pull himself up. And that gives him a lot more freedom of movement um, than if that was not the case. And actually, that seems to be a trend. If you look at other games like Spelunky, also has a small jump height, also lets you grab edges. So I think, I think there's something there to be learned that if you, if you don't have these crazy jumps like Meat Boy and Mario, which jumps like four, five, six times their own height, then you, you might consider handling edges because if people couldn't get up here, they would go nuts. Of course, if you put Mario or um, Meat Boy into a limbo level, that would not be playable. And I think that is the end of my talk. You can uh, download my thesis here if you're curious for more. And I don't know how much time. 10 minutes. Uh, he'll come to you with a microphone if you have questions. Any questions? No questions. Oh, there's a question there. Hello? Okay. Hello. <laughs> uh, in Limbo, it seems like there is uh, some kind of handling with physics as well. The environment has some physicality to it. I'm just wondering if there was any like consideration with the jumping and movement with the physicality of the world? <coughs> so, <coughs> are you thinking um, <coughs> the acceleration or which part of it? Uh, no, for example, platforms can move uh, mm. and move the player with it or stuff. Like yeah, that. so um, Mario is, is tile-based and a bit older than the others, and Meat Boy in many ways is similar to Mario, whereas Limbo is different because it's actually a physics engine running. I, th I believe it's box 2D, so there is just a capsule with acceleration and forces, whereas the other two, as far as I know, is, is implemented hard code, so it's kind of custom physics, whereas in Limbo there is actually kind of rigid body objects that are moving around that you have to deal with and, and check all sorts of things. So in that way, there's, there's definitely a, a huge change in the way the games are implemented in terms of uh, the physicality of the world. And it's correct that he, he does have this very uh, dynamic, very physical jump, and there's all these different parameters that, that makes his jump almost different every time uh, in small cases. And, uh, yeah, and that, of course, makes, makes, it, makes it so that you have to be a little bit more forgiving with your jumps because you can't quite count on the player making the maximum jump. But yeah, maybe that answers your question. Other questions? Everyone down here. Thank you. Um, I had it's more of a comment and an open question. Sure. Um, I, I always felt that in Limbo, my voice sounds weird here. Thank you. <laughs> I always thought that Limbo, uh, I mean, they could have easily made you jump a little bit higher to get off the ledges. Absolutely. But it felt like they, you know, you, you had to climb over it as yeah. kind of a metaphor for like a, a struggle. It's not easy to traverse this nope. world. And I was wondering if you also thought of that kind of stuff in your thesis. And, I didn't go too much into that, but I definitely think uh, you're right. I think that the, the height is part of making, making it, the mood of Limbo is that you're hindered and you're in this gloomy world. So if you had this fantastic Mario jump where you could air control all over the place, I think that would make for a very different mood and I don't think it would work very well. Uh, I haven't thought much about the, the specific the ledge grabbing. I think it, I was thinking mainly that it was there because everything else would be horrible if you couldn't get up at all. But you might be onto something, and I do think it, it will give a very different feel that you kind of lift yourself up instead of just soar through the air and, and do like some sort of fantastical landing. More questions? I think we have time for one more and two more. It is also very early. Did you have a long night? <laughs> anyway, if we don't have any more questions, then I think we'll stop there. But I'll be around if you want to talk more about jumping. You're welcome to catch me. Thank you.